guests and I want to welcome Tim Tucker to the podcast. Hi, Tim. Welcome. How you doing? I appreciate you having me. Thank you. So, Tim, so tell our uh, worldwide audience here a little bit about who you are, if they are not, are, aren't aware already of, uh, of who you may be, what, what your story in golf is. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm a caddy on the PGA Tour currently for Kurt Kitayama. I've caddied for Adam Svensson and then Bryson DeChambeau for six and a half, seven years. Um, and prior to that, I worked at Bandon for about 12 years as a caddy. Uh, I was a PGA member, so I was a club pro for a long time. Yeah. And before that, I was in the Air Force. And then I'm from Amarillo, Texas. And I just moved back here about two and a half years ago. So I love it. You're, and you're a pretty good golfer for too, so. Well, not I'm I'm terrible now, but yeah, I was I was, <laughs> I was decent, yeah, decent, <laughs> decent amateur, not good, yeah. but decent. Okay, so that's awesome. So we're, we'll get into some other stuff, but we're going to talk today about putting. Um, obviously, I feel like you are uh, the specialist in putting. We're all going to learn about it, and then we're also going to talk about uh, your product you have that's changing people's putting's lives. But I feel like what we have to do, and I want you to do, is explain to people here. The listener um I, I just want to go through what what is if, if i ask you this question why are let's let's talk mostly about amateurs we'll talk a little bit about pros we'll get into bryson and kurt and stuff like that but i, I want to know for amateurs what we hear you know speed is everything if your speed's fine you're good um to me i don't know if that's exactly the answer i know it's a huge component but what's wrong with putting for amateur golfers why do they stink and well Amateur yeah. golfers think for a lot of reasons, but the, well, the biggest one is the time commitment, right? Yeah. I mean, I used to caddy for these CEOs at Bandon and I'm, and you know, they'd be frustrated with the round and I'm like, yeah. Bill, listen, how much do you golf? He goes, well, I live in New York city. So, you know, I probably play about 20 times a year and yeah. I never hit balls. Yeah. And I said, well, if you ran your company, and you showed up 20 days to run your company a year, how would it, how would it be? And he goes, it'd be, it'd be bankrupt. I'm like, okay, so that's number one. Obviously that's time commitment is, is a big thing of being good, but that, that apart, that aside, you know, the putting aspect of it is, is that golfers are killing themselves with telling them, telling themselves are bad putters. And I think that, I don't think I know we're better putters than we think we are. And we're worse green readers than we think we are. So, yes, most golfers would say, yeah, I'm a good green reader, but my putting sucks. And I would say the complete opposite. It's the shortest stroke, right? Mm -hmm. It should be the easiest to repeat, yet we're, we stink at it. Now, yeah. why is that? So, you know, and, I, and I'll, I'll pose this question to a lot of guys, and I'll, and I'll pose it to you as well. So, I used to, well, let me, this this may be kind of all over the place, but I'm going to start yeah. out with a couple of things. One, mm -hmm. a line on the golf ball. I used to never use a line on a golf ball. Right. And the reason was because it took me too long to aim it. And I just didn't feel comfortable with it. It didn't look right to me. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yep. Well, the biggest problem with that is that it's a massive feedback loop. It's a massive, it's, it's massive in saying, Hey, I rolled this ball perfectly end over end. That means I hit it with a square club face. That's the only way to do that. Right. Mm -hmm. yep. So, Every time I hit a putt, if I have a line on the ball and I can see the line roll perfectly end over end, then I know I hit a good putt. Tour players work on this religiously. Um, Adam Svensson would, when I caddy for him, he would set the ball down just on the green and roll it 10 or 15 feet and just watch it roll end over and not to a hole. And it just putt all around the putting green, not even to a hole, just rolling the ball perfectly end over end. Bryson, same way not putting to a hole, just watching the ball roll end over end. So once you develop that skill, now it's just about quick maintenance and we're done. You know, Bryson's putting routine in a week of golf at a tournament would be, and this is no exaggeration, I'll go 15, so an hour, probably an hour, 30 minutes a week putting. A week, okay. If, if he were not at a, at a tournament, he would putt 0%, zero hours, <laughs> zero minutes. So during COVID, 100 days that we were off, he hit zero putts. He did not hit one putt. Wow. He came out, played Colonial, finished third. So he, he and he he was always a top 20 putter. He or not always, but he would he the later years of his uh, the time I was with him, he was a top 20 putter. Yeah. So 
anyway, um, so back to green reading, right? If I can roll a ball end over end. So the question is, if I locked you into a room in a room and said, hey, here's a putter. Here's a ball with a line on it. I'm not going to let you out until you can roll it end over end consistently. How long would that take you? I don't think it'd take long. And I'm not a great putter. I mean, not, I don't think it'd take long at all. No, it took me about 15 minutes to start to roll it end over end consistently. Yeah. Okay. Now I've been playing golf a long time. But and I would say I was a I was an average to above average putter, right? So it took me about about fifteen minutes to really do it because I never did it. The hardest part was aiming the line where I wanted it to go. But that's a skill, and again, that takes a little practice. Well, you know what what I used to struggle with and take me thirty seconds to line up now takes me five or ten seconds. So it's really quick. Yeah. Um, so. So if it's if it wouldn't take very long for you to roll the ball end over end with some consistency, then that would tell me that there's nothing wrong with your golf your putting stroke. So Strokes three factors easy. in making a putt, right? Three Not things you have to have. One, we have to have we have to roll the ball on our intended line. So if we roll the ball end over end, we do, we accomplish that goal. Secondly, we have to be able to hit it and control our distance and our speed. Okay, and that's easy to see. Again, that's part of the feedback loop. Hey, I rolled the ball end over end. My desired delivery speed to the hole is a foot by or two feet by, whatever it is, doesn't matter. You can see whether you do that or not. The one thing we can't see is where we start our ball, right? And how much break we play. It's because we're, we're not standing directly behind it. I know everybody has done this, especially in a scramble, and they go, you hit a putt, and the guy goes, oh, you push that. And you're like, what are you talking about? I hit it perfect, right? <laughs> It's again, it's our perception of, and our angle of where we're looking, right? We don't see it. And the ball's always breaking due to gravity. So, so the three skills in putting are starting the ball in line, controlling our distance or speed control, and three would be the read. Well, okay. I think we can be really good at two of them. The third one, which takes complex math, is green reading. To think that we can walk up and just look at it, look at it and go, oh, I think this breaks a foot yeah. is crazy because it's, it is a, it is a formula, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know if anybody's ever seen Apollo 13, right? You have all these engineers going, wait a second. If we come in at too low of an angle or too high of a speed, we're going to bounce off the atmosphere. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, that's what we're doing. We're always bouncing off the atmosphere because we don't know the complex math and the angle that it takes to get it into the hole, right? What about those that are, you hear, I, I just see it, I feel it. What, yeah. What, what, what would you say <laughs> to that? I, I hear people explain it, just see water, sure. like visualize water running and that, that'll that show you your break and just see no, it. Those, that, those are all real things. I mean, sure. Okay. But what I will tell you happens is, mm -hmm. And I would bet I can't I can't think of anybody. And I would love to, if someone can disagree with me, I'd love to hear it. So we have a subconscious and conscious mind, right? Mm -hmm. I pick when I'm reading the green, I'm using my conscious mind to pick that spot. Mm -hmm. When I stand sideways to the ball and I'm looking out there, my subconscious <laughs> is like, dude, there's no way this putt is edge. You need to push it out to the right. And so we do, and that's how we make putts. But so it's we're always trying to compensate over, you know, we're always trying to fix our error that our conscious mind makes, right? Yeah. Sorry about that. So, okay. um, does that make sense? That's how we make putts, you know. Hey, I used to tell Bryson, dude, you always start your putts online, our green reading method, because we had contour maps and, and all that we knew all the math, we had it in our charts. And he controlled his speed better than anybody I'd ever seen with his ruler. I'm like, you're at a massive disadvantage because if you're just off on one of them, you can't make the putt. Where, where a normal golfer, he can be off on all three and make it because he doesn't even have the right read. That's a good point. Really Does good that point. make sense? That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I kind of calm him down a little bit. I'm like, hey, plus you have the turf, but that's another story. We can't do anything about the surface we're putting across. You know, sometimes you get bad bounces and sometimes you don't. But well, the truth think, of the matter is, is that we need help in reading greens. And that's why I developed this true aim marker. So, and I hate to sound like a salesman, 
I know you're not talk about it, but that's you why know, you're on here to talk about today. Yeah, because we, we want to make the putters better. better. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's all it is. So they, anyway, that's the long and short of why amateurs struggle with putting, in my opinion. Okay. So we I think we need to get something the cat out of the bag here a little bit. So who so one thing I've learned about you, which I think is fascinating, is everybody would think Bryson's the uh, mad scientist, but you're like his evil twin or <laughs> i mean you I, yeah. I feel like you may have brought more to the table and that stuff um or you know the way you guys work together is amazing and it's not like he was saying okay this is what you need to do you need to calculate this this was a true team and you brought you brought a lot of stuff so your air force was very influential on you for some of this stuff T talk a little bit about that like how what because I think, I, you know, you, you talk about math and these calculations you're making. You know, you're just not, I, I want people to understand, there's a lot that's gone into this. And you're very, you're, I would call it kind of a putting guru um, with green reading, especially um, with the other stuff you've done with Aimpoint and whatever. So you've been doing this a long time. So I feel like people need to understand that when you say math, it's not like you're just saying it to just say it. There's stuff behind it. So right. no, the question is. A lot of the stuff yeah, like, with was, you know, first off, People, Bryson's really misunderstood. Um, one of the things that, you know, he is a very demanding human being and he will not accept excuses, right? So you better be on point. And that was probably the biggest thing that I got out of working for Bryson is that you have to get better every day or you will be gone, right? And he wouldn't hesitate to call you out. And so um, I was always, you know, I've always felt like I really got into golf when I was at Bannon, I had a lot of opportunity to play, you know, in tournaments and stuff like that. So I really started working on my game and I felt like I was, wasn't as talented. So I had to figure out other ways to get better without actually getting, you know, physically better. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Using shortcuts of, you know, Hey, hitting the ball closer to the pin. And then Bryson would tell you that he's the same way. He always had to, he felt he had to work harder because he had less talent. And so he would try anything to get better. And so he was very open about like, if I wanted to bring something, I'd say, Hey, I was thinking about this. He'd go, let's try it. And if it worked, he's like, let's implement it. If it didn't, he was like, that's stupid. No. That's so, yeah. I mean, and we would tr like, dude, we would, it, we'd, we'd go off the chart sometimes down these rabbit holes, but, um, and sometimes they're good. Sometimes they're bad, but uh, you know, well, now Oh, go ahead. Calculations in the fairways. Did you did you do different like in the morning with do and stuff like that? How the ball is going to react for yardages oh, yeah. and stuff like that and everything. So, I, I want to know what percent on tour do that um, oh, as far as ball distance. Like knowing exactly, I don't know if anybody does. And and I'll give you a good example. This we played at uh, the WGC in Austin this mm -hmm. year. I'm caddying for Kurt. God, he, he putted the lights out. He played so good. Hit the ball beautifully. He finished fifth. But um, one, we teed off at eight in the morning, and he was hitting his eight iron, 194. Or sorry, okay. his, his six iron, 194. Okay. Four hours later, he was hitting it 211. Okay? Now, yeah. several reasons. One, there's, with the golf ball, okay, there's a couple of things that affect it. Obviously, temperature is one, right? The mm -hmm. colder, the less it travels, the hotter, the further it goes. But mm -hmm. there's also altitude and humidity. Well, if you combine all three of those, you get what you call density altitude. All right? So a good example, I live in Amarillo, Texas. We're at 3,500 feet, okay? Mm -hmm. So if you did all your calculations here, if, if you were living in San Diego and that's where you, and you hit a you know, a five iron, 200 yards, and you came here to Amarillo and you use 3,500 feet, right? You'd have X distance. But the reality is, is that with the density altitude, we are, the altitude is 3,500, but our density altitude with our temperature, like today, we're at 7,000 feet, right? Yeah. Yeah. Which would just in itself would be 14%. Wow. Sorry. Yeah. 14%. So, um, that's a massive difference, right? Mm -hmm. So, and then when the ball's wet, the spin rates change. So with a six iron for Kurt, if, if it's due, if there's any dew or moisture in the grass with a five iron, he'll lose five percent or six iron, he'll lose 4% of his shot. 
in distance because the spin rate increases, right? Mm -hmm. So we're constantly making these adjustments throughout the day. But again, if we just used this 194 number and then we got to 18 and needed to hit a six iron and we were 194 and we pulled six iron, we would have hit it 15 yards over the green, right? Wow. So yeah, it changes no. every day, but this is how we get better and kind of how we implemented this with Bryson. It was like, man, look, you practice more than anybody. If I can get better at yardages and get you just one foot closer or one yard closer to the green, you'll be number one in every ball striking category. And so we dove into it, figured out how it worked, it created a formula for it, and it worked beautifully. And he still uses it. He's, he still uses it. Um, I'd tell you he got a little lazy with it because I, I caddied for him at live and he was kind of, you know, winging it a little bit, I thought. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, I was just helping out there because his – his caddy, Greg Bodine, had a had a family emergency and had to leave. But um, yeah, don't start any controversy here, Tim. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, and I, I tell you what, Kurt Kitayama, and then yeah. no offense to Bryson, it was great being around him. We are friends, I promise you. Yeah. Um, and I talked to him, probably talked to him once a month, you know, and trying to talk about golf, just about life, right? But uh, Kurt is the most amazing guy, man. I am, I'm, I'm privileged to work for him. I tell you. And I had probably the best week of my caddy career at Royal Liverpool. Like, I don't know what happened. Um, I know what happened, but I won't go into it. But like, just ch change, man. It was like, I, it was the most enjoyable caddy experience of my life. And I was blessed to be with him and, and caddy for him that week. That's awesome. That's awesome. You guys loaded with, loaded with talent. And I mean, it's oh, unbelievable. Unbelievable. I, I love watching his driver swing. I mean, I like watching all his swings. I, I love his finish. Um, what what was the uh tournament on 18 where he lost it right and didn't win? And then I think he won the next week. Was it was it a week or two later he won? Where are we um, talking? Who are we talking about? Kurt Kurt. So he uh lost a tournament, I think it was on 18 because he hit it right. And it's I think he had a one stroke lead, and a couple of weeks later, I think he won last year or this year. That, well, I don't know. I'm not, he he, he this right? year I didn't caddy for him at he finished second at Congaree. Oh, sorry. It was Pebble Beach. Yeah. He I think he hit it long on three. He was in the okay. lead, I think, on Sunday. Um and then ended up fin you know, kind of blowing it and finished 21st. And then yeah. I think he let his caddy go. He called me that week. I happened to be in Phoenix with Chris Como doing promoting my ball marker. Okay. And I just happened to be in the right place. And, he, and Kurt's like, hey, you want to caddy a couple weeks? I'm like, sure. Couple weeks. We, yeah, we did uh, Phoenix and Riv. And I told him, like, he blew me away. I was like, man, you are elite in three of the four categories. He's like, what do you mean? I said, well, your putting's elite. Your ball striking's elite. Um, you, your iron play, your putting, yeah. your wedging is elite, and your driving's fucking terrible. And uh, you fix that, and these guys won't know it hit them. And he led the field in driving the next week at Arnold Palmer and won. So he, with even yeah. part, and he hit an OB on the weekend each day and still won. So oh, he, that's right, yeah, yeah. I, you know, the the announce. That's what I was thinking of. The announcers drive me nuts because the, you know they're like, you hear him go, why didn't he just pull out a after they see it, right? Losing it to the right arm out. Why didn't he just pull a four iron out here? I'm like you know, there's. <laughs> I just, I love how he just kept going at it. And, um, yeah, you know, he, on Sunday, I think he had a three shot lead yeah. going onto the ninth hole and he just double crossed his driver, hit it left and wow. got unlucky. I mean, it was the resting on the cart path, but the cart that, on the edge of it, but the cart path was OB yeah. and he ended up making triple. And what did you say to him after that? What, 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 what did you did say I, anything to him after that hole? I didn't say anything. He said it to me. He goes, dude, Tim, I'm totally fine. I like, I'm not even nervous. I just, I just made a bad speech, you know? Awesome. And I was awesome. like, damn, let's go. You know, yeah, I, was, sweet. I was so impressed. He had that putt on 18, which was like 60 feet. You know, I don't, yeah. I don't know what it was. And um, the only thing I told him, I said, just play a little more break than you think, because I want it getting closer to the hole instead of further away. Right. Yeah. Um, Cause it was a big right to left or left to righter. But um he told me because he hit it to an inch, right? And then marked it. And yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think Victor asked him to mark it. So yeah. Anyway, he marked it. Um 
And I asked him afterwards, I said, dude, how nervous he goes, dude, I was more nervous on the 10 footer on the first, or the, he had a three footer for par on the first hole of the day. He goes, I was more nervous on the three footer than I was on the, the, the 60 footer. Wow. That's so, amazing. Yeah. It blows my mind with how these guys think, you know, but that's how ready they are for the spotlight young. Yeah. I mean, he's worked his whole life for it, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, it, it's amazing that, you know, you'll hear people, I, I've heard people say when somebody wins, like, oh, that guy, why is that guy crying? It's because they have no idea what they put into it. People who would say that, to, you know, but the, all the work they put in the dream since four or five years old to finally culminate, it's just, it's beautiful to see. So, you know, it's awesome. man, it's funny you say that. And I, and I was at Wells Fargo when you're working for Bryson. And I remember, I mean, clear as a bell, I was just standing there behind him and watching him hit balls. And going, you know, there's a reason why he's hitting balls and I'm caddying because my whole life I've kind of, you know, I've never worked a hundred percent as hard as I can at something. Right. And yeah. I've started to with caddying, you know, you know, with Bryson, but like he, kid never went to a dance, never had a girlfriend. All he did was golf, 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 sacrifice, sacrifice. Right. And the same with all these guys. Right. But you you, wit, you witness it because all you know we see them on we see them for you know three days or maybe we just see them on the weekend you know when or yeah. when they're in the lead on the back nine and go oh, okay whatever but man you don't see all the prep work you know they're at home banging balls that, that's what they do all day long they work on their bodies they work on their brain they work on their swing they work on you know everything and it's yeah. like there's a massive massive um dedication that they have that most normal people don't have well I, I wish more people would realize that because it's not it's the hardest thing i found out about playing i think this is what you meant about working hard at anything with with golf too is that there's a huge difference of going out to hit golf balls for eight hours or going to putt for so many hours are you what are you doing are you just hitting them or are you really working on something that is where it becomes really really hard i think you know you have to arrange and hit balls for a certain amount of time but can you go do it and work on stuff that you're supposed to be working on or you know you need to work on? Then then that yeah. is work. That's work. Yeah, no doubt. You know? So yeah, it's amazing their level of dedication is it's it's second huge. to none for sure. Huge. So I want to get to the 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 touring marker, but let's let's start off a little bit with why you got to that, because you are a um aim point guy. Yeah, I first I, off, right? So how how did he went from the evolution from aim point to this? How come? Let's talk about it a little bit. Yeah, I went, so I, I learned, I was, at a, I was at a Mike Adams golf school and I was fitting, fitting putters for David Adele. And oh, okay. so I was doing the putter fitting portion of the school, right? And um, Mike had brought in Mark Sweeney and all I saw, because I was working, you know, part of the clinic, but, you know, we had dinner that night and when Mark got there, we went out to the putting green at night and Mark was reading putts in the dark, right? And mm -hmm. And uh, Stan Utley was there. He was hitting all the putts and he's making these putts in the dark. And I was like, huh, there's something to this. And I got a chart. And so I took this chart home back to Bandon. And man, I, I took seven days off work. And all I did was work on trying to figure out how this thing worked out. And it clicked with me real, for some reason. Um, and I loved it. And so met Mark later on, uh, uh, about a month later, I'd set up a school. He's like, hey, set up a school and I'll, I'll certify it. And he's like, we played golf before that. And he's like, dude, you know more about this than all my instructors. And I'm like, yeah, dude, I, I mean, I'm into it. So, so with Mark and then another guy, Jason Goldsmith, a buddy of mine, he's, he works with, he's a performance coach and phenomenal. Uh, and I mentioned him earlier about green reading. We really jumped, dove into this. Well, and then uh, I got involved with Bryson vector putting came along Bryson, you know, morphed more to, to vector. And I still used aim point, the original, you know, I never learned the finger thing. I ne I've never, I still don't know it, but um, I always used the, you know, the charts and the con, you had to read contour maps and. Well, you were talking before express, you're, t you're talking aim point prior to express. Aim point Correct. Express, right? Yeah. I didn't yeah. know. Yeah. I don't, sorry. Yeah. yeah. You're um, doing the real, that was the real, that, well, not real, but that was much more difficult. Yeah, that was the real deal, right? That was the, yeah, yeah. you know, all the rest are shortcuts. They are, they're easier, yeah. you know, but again, without all the data now, you know, we don't have the contour book. So it's like, really, you know, 
you have to fudge it a little bit, right? So it's fine, whatever. <laughs> but anyhow, got in with Bryson. He was he was doing vector uh, through Mike with Mike Shy, and anyway, had a. And then so we just you know started using this method, and we we're kind of using the little aim point, little vector, whatever it was, right? And then vector, we started talk to what's vector for people that don't know vectors. So oh man, this is not a subject I really want to get into because it was okay. a there was a. Colonel Templeton, he he does, he was an aerospace engineer. He designed the SR seventy one, or part of it. Blackbird. He invented. He wrote this book called Vector Putting. Okay. In in the eighties, okay. and he created a, a a version like like the 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 line, the shot tracer on the putting green, and all the things, right? Okay. And that's where aim point, some of aim point, or a lot of aim points come from. Is vector putting? This book's really hard to find, but um, Okay. I have Bryson has a copy and Mark Sweeney has a copy that I've seen. So anyway, whatever. Um, so that's where that started from. And, and vectors, they're very, they're very similar, but one is goes off the low zero. One goes off the high zero and one's for speed and distance or speed and break. And one just for break. So okay. Okay. anyhow. Um, and so how I came up with the marker, I started working for Adam Svensson after I, you know, Bryson and I decided not to work together anymore. And I we were at Valspar and Adam Svensson is an amazing kid, right? He, his ball striking is elite and mm -hmm. he struggles with putting mm -hmm. and he grinds on putting for hours, like two, three hours every day. Right. Mm -hmm. Like he'll go home, he'd be off a week and come back and go, man, my back's sore. I'm like, why? He goes, I put it every day for eight hours. I'm like, <laughs> So he's a perfect example of a guy that has a perfect putting stroke yet struggles with green reading. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'm going to give you a good example about that in a minute. But so we were at Valspar in, in Tampa and I was just on the putting green watching him putt. And I was, uh, I was just watching him and I said, Hey, do me, I don't know why it hit me, but I said, Hey, do me a favor. Aim. And he picked like a little eight footer. And I said, aim the ball dead center of the hole. And he goes, okay. And I said, now line your putter, the line on your ball or on your putter up to the line on the ball. It's aimed at the middle of the hole. And I said, he goes, okay. And I go, does this putt break? He goes, yeah. I said, what percentage of slope do you think you're putting across? And he said a two. And I said, okay, just open the putter face that you think is two, to, two degrees and then putt. And he hit it and he made it. And I was like, that's interesting. And then he goes, how'd you do that? And I said, don't worry about it. Well, I was staying with uh <laughs> steve harrison the owner of sick golf right sick putters okay. yeah. and i which was convenient because i said hey steve do me a favor make me a putter with these angles on it and he goes yeah let me call my guy they milled it they they we got the angles right and he milled it up and i took it to the next tournament and adam took it out and made three putts with it made the first three putts. And he's like, dude, this thing works. Right. And I was like, Oh, I'm going to sell millions of putters. Well, I was like, that's so stupid. Why try and sell a product for 500 to a thousand dollars? And I can just sell a ball marker for a hundred. Right. <laughs> yeah. So that's where I came up with the ball marker. So for people that don't know, this is what the true aim ball marker looks like. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's, it's nice. It's, it's kind of heavy. A little kind of, I mean, not too thick, but it's 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 a nice nice material. Yeah, it's about twice. So it's yeah, it's an eighth of an inch thick, where a quarter is mm -hmm. a sixteenth. Okay. Yeah. It's three hundred three stainless. People are like, dude, it's crazy. You're selling a ball marker for a hundred bucks, and I'm like, well, the first thing is we're selling the technology, not not the piece of metal. Okay. But yeah. it is a very lovely piece, right? People say it's suited. Oh, it's it's nice. up. Yeah, it's not cheap. It's not like a little piece piece of well, plastic. I guess I maybe I'm skewed out here in Scottsdale, but I think for what you get from it, the putts you make, hundred dollars compared to what you're spending on drivers and everything, which do those typically help? <laughs> and to me, it's cheap. Yeah, yeah it is. Cheap. That's that's my opinion. It's that's a great point. It. I bought a driver about six months ago, and I remember going walking out of the pro shop, uh, the golf shop in my club, going, "This I paid six hundred dollars for this driver. It will <laughs> never save me a shot. It will only cost me a shot." <laughs> 
probably yeah, so like this <laughs> marker will only save me shots, yeah. not cost me, right? Yeah, I exactly. can't do something. I can't read greens with my, you know, with my eyes. So I need something. So anyhow, it blows my mind that people, you know, would think this is expensive, but they'll go run and get the driver. But it, and it, folks, it's it's cheap when you find how how much it'll change your game. But go ahead. Yeah, it really will. So let me tell you how this works. Okay, mm -hmm. you guys can look at this. This has nine angles on it. Okay, straight is one of the angles. That's the center line, the long black one. All right. So basically what you would do is you'd mark your golf ball with it. And then the, our, the first step is we aim the line on our ball at the dead center of the hole. All right. So now I want everybody that's listening to, in your mind, picture the hole that you know more, you've played more than any other hole. And so I'm going to ask you, what hole have you played more than any other? What 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 green do you know better than any other green in the world? Oh, uh, I'm going to go back to my home course growing up, uh, Greenbrier Hills and in, in, in Kirkwood, Missouri. So okay, and the, you uh, pick a hole. That's going to be a hole in a pin location. Fifteen hole back right. Okay, yeah, I got fifteen it. hole back right. So for everybody else that's picked their spot, what we're going to do is we're going to for you the fifteenth hole back right. We're going to hit our shot ten feet left of the hole. Okay. okay. For anybody, anybody that's thinking of a, a left pin, just imagine a 10-footer ten, a ten to the right. So you have a 10-footer left of the hole, okay? Mm -hmm. So we're going to go through a process of elimination to get to the correct angle, all right? Mm -hmm. We have nine angles. So the first thing you do, mark your ball, aim it to the dead center of the hole, and then match the center line to the line on your ball. Okay. And pick your ball up. Now the marker is aimed at the hole, correct? Yep. It's easier to aim the ball line than the marker line because there's so many lines. And um, checking it, can you and checking the line? Can you check behind with your uh, using your putter like a? Yeah, yeah. I always hold like the putter up at yeah. an angle. Like here, let me show you. Double check it. We got a wedge here. I always kind of. Yeah. I always kind of just hold it up. Yeah. So okay. Perfect. Yeah, I think you show that in your video too that it comes with it when you get it. Yeah. Too, so, yeah. So I'll be okay. and, and you know, again, if you've never used a line or aimed it, it's a skill that you have to develop. Okay. Like yeah. I said, for me, I went from probably 30 seconds to, to down to sometimes I set it down perfectly. So, but it never takes me longer than 10 seconds to do this. And I, and what I try and do is if I've got a guy that has a longer putt than me or chipping or whatever, and I have an opportunity yeah. to get in and, and mark my ball and aim it real quick. I do. And I get it yeah. out of the way as fast as possible. Yeah, be efficient. So, so we've aimed our ball. We've we've aimed our ball at the hole. We matched the center line of the marker to that line. So, and we've picked our ball up. And the marker is now aimed at the dead center of the hole. Okay. Yeah. So now I'm going to ask you four questions. We're going to come up with the read, the angle yeah. that you're going to use for your putt. Yeah. So you have a back right pin. You're 10 feet left of the hole. Is that putt straight or does it break? It breaks. It breaks. So as soon as you say it breaks, we've eliminated the center angle. Now we're down to eight. Okay. Which, way, which way does it break? To the right. It breaks to the right. So we've eliminated the left angles. So now we're using the right angles to project it out left so it can break right. Okay. So now we're down to four. Now, I've assigned a value to these of saying that the first angle to the right is is one or flat the second one angle okay. Okay, okay is two or average the third is steep and the fourth is severe so is this putt is and not up and down up and down does not matter we're talking only side angle this putt in your mind we know it breaks right is it flat or steep does it break a little or a lot no no, which one? It can only be one of the two. Oh, wait, wait, I, I thought you were saying on the two ends, straight no, no, no. Um, the statement. Okay. What was the question again? Your putt that you have in yeah. your mind, you said it's not straight, it breaks to the right. Does yeah. it break a little or a lot? Oh, it breaks a lot. I'm sorry. It breaks a lot. So if it breaks yeah. a lot, we've eliminated one and two. Now we're down to three and four. Okay. Yeah. Which is steep or severe. Is that putt steep or severe? I would say steep. Okay, and if you said, hey, if you put a gun to my head, I couldn't make a decision, then we'd put it right between the three and four because we do have half angles as well. But okay. you said it's steep, so we would put our, we'd match our line to the third angle, which is the white one, and we'd pick our marker up and putt. 
and aim the line on your putter up to that and go. Correct. Now, the other thing I tell people to do, here's a common mistake, is they walk backwards and look at where it's aimed. And the problem with that is you only have two choices. One is to agree with it and one is to disagree with it. You've already made it. Yeah, you've already done it, right? So it We've already done it. So I've already done yeah. all the input. Why am I going to go back and, and now make some rash decision? <laughs> so what I tell yeah, people that's... to do is once they've put it down, <laughs> step into the putt, match the line on the putter to the ball, look at the hole for distance, and then just putt. Wow. So speak out a variable in, in this, meaning as far as you go to – because that, that green would be equal, I guess, all around. What, what, what about double breakers and stuff like that? Yeah, well, let me, let me address your, your putt. Okay, so what speed green in your mind is the one that you just read? Oh, I'd say 10. Okay, so what if it, what if it were an eight? Would it have been, would it have broke more or less? It would have broke the same, right? No, I mean, no. no. If it if, if, it's if it was faster, eight, so slower, faster putts break more. Break, 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 slower break, putts slower, break less, less, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, so yeah, if you're yeah. knowing that going through this process, and I said, "Hey, is it flat or steep, or does it break a little or a lot?" You'd have probably said it breaks a little because it's slower. Okay, I got it. Doesn't you. matter about speed. It's always one of the angles, but it's your interpretation of how much break it is. That's what we're getting to. Now. Okay. Real quick, for the tour players, this is a design for 11 stemp and the angles match percentage of slope. So for people that actually know the stemp speed and know the percentage of slope that they're putting across, if yeah. you were on a two, you'd put it on the second angle. Simple okay. as that. But I don't teach that because I think it's very difficult to learn that. Do you use your feet as a gauge to figure it out? Uh, I think slope? that's impossible and I'll tell you why. If I were standing on concrete, OK, yeah. and I felt a two percent slope and then I stepped on a soft green. My feet would sink in more and I may feel more or less. Or if I stood on a just a, a firm green, it's not going to be as firm as concrete. We're always going to or I might be wearing different shoes and I might have a different feel. And again, one percent of slope is a sixteenth of an inch. So we're trying to feel over the width of our shoulders a sixteenth of an inch with our feet. and. I think I think it's some people can do it with some consistency, but I would say the average golfer that doesn't have time to spend hours and hours a day working on this is not going to do that. So just I'd throw that out the window. So what what would be the difference on your marker if you pick wrong between let's say let's say I I, I picked the third, one, but let's say I said the second one. What so there's one degree difference in slope, right? One percent difference, yeah. So on a 15 footer, what would how at, at on 11 green, what would I have missed it by then by being off? Uh, that green? Okay, let me. If it's go. low, see, this is what I want to get into. If you're low, it's going to be much further let's away. You mentioned the, that earlier about something. With let's use the 10. Let's use the 10 footer. Okay. Okay. And again, let's assume that you're. The only way I can tell you how much that well, I can tell you how much it'd be on the 10 footer. The difference between the third angle would be nine inches out or sorry the second angle would be nine inches out and the third angle would be 14 inches out so you'd miss okay. by five inches okay. at one it would be <laughs> four, yeah now let's go to 30 feet right oh, now the difference of the miss is 18 to 24 inches right right huge massive especially if you miss low too because then it's running more it's going to end up further away. Is that what you were hinting at with Kurt on that big, long 60 foot putt that you didn't yeah, want to well, be low because it could run more? Dude, it's so funny. I was, I was a head pro at the time and this kid, we were, we were chipping on the putting green, you know, and, and uh, I go, man, you're a good chipper. And he, he was always just really close, but he was always high on yeah. the high <laughs> side of the break. And I said, why do you do that? And he goes, well, because it's always getting, if it's high, it's always getting closer. If it's low, it's always getting further away from the hole. Yeah. You figure right? it out. So I told <laughs> Kurt, just give it, because, you know, and again, the way that putt was, the angle where the zero break line was, or the straight putt was at an angle where 
if it were lower, it was going less uphill and more downhill, which again, it would have gone further past the hole. Mm -hmm. So because he was playing this a little more break, it, he was hitting it more up into the slope, which would help with the deceleration at the end of the putt being higher. Yeah. Okay. Well, if that makes yeah. sense. No, yeah, yeah. And I knew that putt broke a ton and I just wanted to make sure that he, and he's a fantastic, he, he's, he's a fantastic green reader. He is, he's not perfect. No one is, but he's, he's, you know, he, he goes through stretches where he's really good. Then he goes through stretches where he's really bad. Yeah. Or not really bad. I mean, that, that, that's, yeah. well, rel these guys are the best pro, in the world. Relative to a pro. Yeah. Yeah. Relative <laughs> to one, yeah, to one of the Relative top. to the best in the world. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's 22nd he's in the world. world. He, there's not a bad, I mean, I guess yeah, not a bad number, number 90th is a bad putter compared to number one, but still an incredible putter. Yeah, it's within <laughs> a point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, how long does it take to get used to the picking one of those four? I, mean, I feel like because you get to knock off one of them easily or two, one yeah. or two pretty easily for sure. I mean, yeah. the extreme one or little, and I feel like it's in my little, little experience so far you, you're you're left you're not left with nine choices right yeah you, you cut it down really quick so here's really the quick cool thing here's what i find when i'm playing with my buddies right the terminology changes so let's say you hit that putt and it was a it was a four not a three mm -hmm. okay and you missed it low you'd go oh i should have played that on a four not a three you're getting actual feedback i've never heard someone miss a putt and say ah oh, damn i should have played 14 inches instead of eight. That's huge. Now no, we so have, true. like we could look at our, our feedback loop and say, hey, I rolled it end over end. So I hit it square. My speed was good. I was just low. I should have played a half angle more or a full angle more or two angle, whatever it is. But then you can look at it and go, wait, I did everything right. I just made the wrong choice in what angle to play. Or you can say, Hit a putt, it didn't roll end over end, then it doesn't matter. Or my speed was off, then it doesn't matter what angle I chose because I, I didn't execute. And that's a lot easier to own than not knowing why you're doing anything, thinking it's your stroke, which I promise you guys, if you work on, if you spend 10 minutes trying to roll the ball end over end, you will figure it out in 10 minutes. I think uh, Sasha McKenzie did a thing from, I can't remember how many feet it was, six feet maybe, your putter face could be almost open four degrees and still make it. I don't know I any of that. I think it could but, be from six feet out. So uh, uh, degrees, maybe, let me think about that for a second. So six feet, six feet, five feet. We, we know the hole, you have a two and a, you have a two and an eighth inch on each side. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I know this 1% which is 1.75 degrees, sorry, yes, 1% is 1.75 degrees. That would be aimed two and an eighth inches out. So at, I would at say- four, At four. At four feet? No, you're saying at four, uh, four degrees. No, you'd miss, you'd miss by a mile. Ah, oh, okay, four, I'll four, four, four percent, at four, four, four degrees. Yeah, four degrees. Four yeah. degrees is six point eight. What I don't know the math. So you're you're two cups off, or three cups off, almost. Yeah, from again the angle that you're putting to, too, depending on what angle you are. Let's say you're on a sixty down angle instead of a thirty up angle. Downhill putts break more due to time, so it it, it depends. If we're saying a dead straight putt, a dead straight putt, you can be a you can be a degree, you can be a percent open okay. on a five Makes footer. Sense. And make it. Tim, remember how I started this conversation. I'm not a, a I teach full speed. No. <laughs> Funny putting's on my thing. <laughs> so that's interesting. So, well, and let me, I, mean, I shouldn't have said that's not incorrect because also it would certainly matter what your path was as well to that face angle open. You know what? I, I think I totally screwed up. I think you can have, if your face was, I think you could almost be four. Does that make more sense if your path could go four either way? I don't, like, know. I don't. I know that, or I've heard. I don't know this. I haven't done the math on it because I've never dove into it this way. But I've heard that the putt 
the face affects 90% of the yeah. direction versus path. That's, that's what he proved. So that would make sense if he's talking about it being four off. I'll send you a link. I think he did it in 2018, like at the Minnesota section PGA, where he does a huge breakdown, boom, boom, boom. And I think I just said it wrong. I think it's probably path, but I need to watch it again. Yeah, he's a really smart guy. It. So I would, you know, Bryson's worked with him and um, he's way smarter than I am. So I, yeah, I'd, I would, <laughs> I can't, I'm not going to say anything about, I, should, I shouldn't have said anything. Well, about I think it. I said it wrong. I think you're hundred percent right about face, but it, I think it path is you could get off on path. Um, yeah. As long as your face is somewhere in there, but so, but anyways, okay. So, um, what, so, and I won't take up too much of your time. I appreciate you so much spending already so much time with me so far and everybody else here. So I want to just, um, is this something you find people get better at right away or does it take a, a little time or is it a medium? Yeah, you know what? No, you're instantly better. If you okay. will just go through the process, answer the questions. If you go to the website, all this stuff's written out. It's on there. You just need to ask yourself the questions, decide on an angle and don't be afraid to make a mistake. You will learn every putt you hit. It's very intuitive. You will learn and you'll go, Oh, I should, Okay, I rolled it in over end. I had the perfect speed. I should have played half an angle more. You okay. will start every putt you hit, you will learn from. Yeah, I love, I love the feedback. Be patient with it. Look, I love that it cost $100 because if it costs 10 bucks, people would throw it away and not give it a chance. Oh, I agree. I agree. If your driver costs 20 bucks, we'd go through them like hotcakes. Oh, There's $600. Oh. So we play a driver that we can't even hit. Yeah. Because we paid $600 for it. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah. You know, some things are, you know, a guy told me once he goes, Tim, quit helping people for free because there's no perceived value. Yeah, I, I, I've had to, I, I had to learn that in the past yeah. too with teaching. It, people it's, it's sometimes they have to go, wait, way. I invested some time in this. I'm going to use it. You know, I taught Scott Piercy aim point and okay. he called me on Saturday from Houston and he goes, man, I overread everything. And I said, okay, we'll just, he was using the chart and like flipped down to the 10, 10 stem. And he did. And he goes, man, we had a putt on 18 and it said it was two cups of break. And I was like, there's no freaking way, but he goes, you know what? I paid him to teach me this. I'm going to, I'm going to trust it. And he goes, I made it dead center, you know, oh. and he goes, I paid for you in and more in one putt one, my first yeah. week on tour with this, what I thought was a lot to pay you to do this. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so I mean, yeah. had he not had the perceived value or had he not paid it to any one of the, you know, it's like, I don't want to throw it away. Let me try it. He would have yeah. not gone down that road. So it's so true. I mean, so true. I, I almost say that, that it's that way because there are people I'd rather that I'd like to help, but you just kind of make that policy because it's just the way it is. Right. right. Do people need so, to really stick to the, look, there's a method and it, you can't, Look, life is about, we, we fail every day, right? Yeah. It's yeah. Like we don't just give up because we failed, right? We figure it out, you know? Well, it's like, it's... So just give it a little time and work through the problems. I mean, the, the, the math on this works. It's always one of the angles or a half angle every time. It's impossible not for it to be. So now just get better at determining the correct angle. I mean, if you just think about that little statement you just said there versus looking at a putt and going, I don't know, it could be six inches out, a raid, a cup. I mean, just the difference of just hearing yeah. that explanation versus I can just picture somebody standing back there saying all that stuff. I, I mean, I'd probably do it. So it's, this is a, it's simplifying the process, but I love the feedback loop. It's what I talk about all the time in teaching. We got to yeah, have feedback and that's what this does. That's so, I love it. That's so by cool. the way, I got that feedback loop from Jason Goldsmith too. So I'm, he's okay. smart, smarter than me. So yeah. he's a performance coach, man. I mean, you know, I'm, I try exactly. and pick up what I can, you know, but uh, Jason's yeah. Jason is amazing at what he does as well. And he's been a good friend of mine and, and well, supported me with this. So, and he's, you are too, buddy. Yeah, no, I, so anyway, yeah. Been, okay, been, so let's, let's, uh, how, what do people do to, to get these uh, or to get one from you? Yeah, my, my uh, website is trueaimmarker.com. Really easy. 
there's there's information in there. When you get the marker, you get a QR code that you can scan and it takes you to a, a video that you can't see on the website, but it'll walk you through it. Yeah. And um, my email is tt at trueaimmarker.com. And you can email me and I'll probably tell you to call me. So I will walk you through it. I Man, this is what I do. Like I, people call me and go or email me and I'm like, dude, just call me. And I talk to him and I go, oh, I can't believe you're spending the time. I'm like, this is what I do, man. I want you to be a better putter. Well, I mean, I have not advertised this marker at all. Um, yeah. It was actually in Golf Magazine this month, Victor Hovland in the July, July issue. And like, you know, all this has been word of mouth so far, which has been great. I've, wow. I've been taking it slow because I don't want to screw it up. Um, and, but, you know, I'm really getting ready to make a big push with it. And, um, and do some real marketing and getting some getting I had to I've had several tour players use it um and that's not I mean I'm trying to help amateurs man they're the ones yeah. that need it. tour pros are pretty good green readers they could yeah. be better yes but um yeah I, we're really about about to make a push and make this big so I'm really excited about it I'm hoping um like I told you, this this fall and or winter can get you out here and get a group of people. I know I can get a group of people together out here in Scottsdale. And, um, I'd love to. Love to have you come out and uh, go through it too. But, um, it, you know, it's not like you have to wait to do that. <laughs> people can get a hold of you. They can buy it. But um, just, just a heads up for people, I'm going to do it at some point. So um, when the weather's better out here. So, Tim, thank you so much for your time. Just the knowledge bombs you dropped left and right. And uh, it's just a <laughs> Your, your knowledge of it of the putty and just getting there just it, it's awesome people should feel more confident after just listening to this i feel like when i'm around smart people that understand stuff really well with this it it, it doesn't i feel more confident always about it hey there's there's a solution and that's what this product is it's a solution i mean you can walk away not going i don't know what the hell's wrong with my putting why i suck today well it's gonna be like you said one of three things same thing I try to teach the full swing. I don't ever want to hear my students go, I have no idea what the hell happened in the course. I'm like, you don't, then something's really wrong. Right. <laughs> you know, you should know. So that's you you made it, you made that part simple for them and a better putter. So no, I appreciate it. And I, I would tell people, look, man, putting is but golf is hard. But I will tell you, man, if you you're not as bad of a putter as you think, change your focus from your stroke to your green reading and i promise you you'll realize that you'll you'll start to become a believer our brain can't do the complex math just remember that awesome tim thank you appreciate it yes, sir appreciate it thank you